It's a shame not every day of work is like that, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Hello. The old tummy boy. We're supposed to be wearing rash guards here. Don't need. Are you, are you having a beer? Yep. Hey! <laughs> I'd be the only one. <laughs> we thought we were being naughty. Ah, uh, you got me involved. Mate. What do you think? Hello, friends. Bye, bye. What's going on? Hello. Good things. What are we doing? Well, hold on. I'll turn the Blues Brothers off. Hello. Is that wine? You have to go and get wine or a beer. You've got to stay hydrated. Are we actually doing some jiu-jitsu then? Yeah. Oh, it's going to have a party or a drink. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. How are you doing, bud? Right. Um, what's it? Phase two professional athletes allowed to get together and train. So, what's all about? That's it. it sucks for everyone. It's nothing for me. Well, I, I, I'm technically allowed to train, I guess. <laughs> um, so, uh, where are you allowed to train? We'll find a spot. I'm sure you will. I heard Weatherspoon's opening up soon. Yeah. On 15th of June, it's going to be um, non essential stuff, isn't it? It is the I'm not even really a shopping person, but I'm excited. You're going to go to shopping. Go shopping. Oh, you're in the city, aren't you? We've yeah. been allowed to do all that out of the country. <laughs> Um, we, uh, Cindy and I went for a walk today, um, we went all the way to Megan! Hello! Um, we went to makeup because we had to go to Boots and Haiti with Bills and there was makeup there, so that was exciting. Right, exciting. Speaking of Haiti. Uh, has anyone got a suntan yet? Oh, a red. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually got an extra tan here. <laughs> 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 That's that all over tan, isn't it, Liz? I make you more relatable. Is it? Mm, yeah. Right, guys, let's do some jiu jitsu, shall we? Oh, yeah, we have to. Yeah. Right, come on, then. Uh, so you're doing some battle stuff last week. So, you comment about somebody kneeling in front of you, mentioned the head battle, then they're out. Like themselves. Uh, attack options would be to try and get their head underneath yours. Neck attacks. Remember when you do that and pull their head down, that your hips should be um, behind the line of your shoulders. That'll make it hard for them to flatten you out and to defend the guillotine. So really keep that body angle there. Really lean over the head. So this is the recap for the last class. This often leads to opportunities for arm wraps. So if they free their head and start pulling back, you should have this arm tangled up. The other thing it leads to 
is arm drag. So that should be another subhead in the near attack system from this. And the final position, which is probably, I, I think, the most useful, is the violin position. So that is as if you were hugging your opponent, but the one over the shoulder on the other side will come in and you'll take a butterfly grip or a gable grip on the shoulder line here. And here we're looking to either isolate the arm to hit a violin arm bar or looking to sweep off to this side for gringo sweeps. So you should also take note of the hand battle here. So successfully getting a two on one, and there are many of these different grip sets you can take, is uh, very useful. It exposes back ticks, arm drags, and elevations. So while this is going on, you should be having, you've not just got to think about your head battle, you want to be thinking about threatening two on ones as well. So you can take a double wrist control. You can use this to elevate. I don't like using it to elevate. I struggle with it a little bit. So I'm going to switch. So both my thumbs are facing her face. The arm to the side that the arm that I'm grabbing will come in, cup the elbow, and pull the elbow to me. So now you see it's peeled her arm away from her rib cage. Yeah, and it's running across 90 degrees to me. From here, I'm digging my heels into the floor. I'm throwing myself underneath her. Right. Elements, we're going to be taking them or wrapping our arms around the back of her. Or we can win two on one position and elevate off of this as well. So, for this elevation, wrist, pulling the elbow to you, suck your heels under her, and pick up. Yeah. So, it seems he's doing something pretty common, which is to pinch her knees to make it hard for me to uh, actually isolate a leg. I'm definitely doing that as a jiu jitsu defense model. Just trying not to pull off. Whenever I come up with that, with that in that situation, um, I'll put them back down and then chase them up. So I mentioned you should be threatening that direction, driving into them, coming up on top with our dickhead sweeps. That's coming under hooks. I'm coming up into the top position. So I'd be taking my butt out and driving in. So. Try to elevate on your opponent having pinched knees, put them back down, and then immediately come back up on top. So up, knees are tight, place the back, and that's when we should be coming up into this S position, hitting under hooks and chasing them forward. That's a good drill to, to get used to, get your hips under to elevate. I guess the easiest one to do to start with is taking these double seats. This space is generated from controlling the head, forcing your opponent to pull away to free the head. And she'll be using her arms that as well. It's also generated from this hand fight, threatening two on one grips. She'll have to get her other arm involved to strip mine. So now I can start coming in close with double unders. C grips it under her armpits as well. Really want to be like very rarely. I just get this and elevate. Right in the two on one, wait for them to strip. So now I can come in, chasing my double unders and elevate from there. If they're leaning too far back, we can just come straight up. So we're underneath them. We extract one hook and extract the other into a seated S position. And this is where we chase them. If off the double enters, they start leaning into you. This is when we switch back to our elevation. If they're pinching their knees really tight and trying to push their weight backwards, fine. Put them back and chase them. So you really want to get that That is the point of don't go too close, they'll flatten you easily. Butterfly guard retention, butt away, forget really controlling her legs with the hooks. It's that body angle with a mix of the collar type. 
So the drill you can do at home or think about, see grips in the armpit, throw your butt close, and you can do this with somebody who hasn't really done it before, butt under, elevate, back down, and sit up. Here we go, butt out, butt in, up in the air. So, looking at elevate coming forward is very easy. Thank you. Their elbows will quite often be tight, making it hard for me to get underneath here. So, I start with collar ties, trying to pull the head down underneath this. Their hands will get involved, so I can switch to a two on one wrist control. So, you can elevate off of this as well. Both thumbs point into my opponent's nose. I suck my butt under, pull. Trying to get my, trying to get it to punch me in the chin, essentially. The so hands move up, and the arm comes up above. The hands up, in, and then I can switch to the double unders instead. Now I can start looking to attack the leg. Also move to this two and one, cupping the elbow, pulling the elbow to the chest. Butt comes in, elevate. <coughs> So looking at elevate off that like, very useful attack. We can move to single leg X, we'll cover that next. Want everyone to have their option in chasing that way, which is extract one hook, extract and then chase up, head coming up under the chin, the yeah, extra. If I get them up in the air, so butt under, up in the air. From here, sometimes they'll starfish, so their legs will be really wide. So just put your toes on the ground like starfish, like that. So that will be the reaction you get instead. Here, natural transition is to kick one leg through, move one hand down to the leg, maybe the ankle, be a little bit higher on the leg as well. Now that leg will be kicked through. Circle and gets placed on the heel on the on the hip here. Now, I also want to cover the reaction that you should have if you get caught in this position. Your leg is under threat, for sure. On and heel is. They put her hands on the floor. Her heel is open, and I can start getting underneath it to finish heel hooks here. So the best thing for Susie to do is to look at me here, keeping her leg entirely straight, pointing her toes up to the ceiling like this. So in doing this, she's made this leg super heavy. There's a lot of weight going through my right hip. So now me trying to turn my hip onto the side of the knee or the onto the front of the knee is very difficult, which is where, it's where my hips need to be to finish a good heel hook. She is also protecting her heel. I can't bend this leg because of her body position to get under the heel. So this reaction is very useful. It also gives you time to strip the, your opponent's control on your leg. Do the right way of doing that. If she stays with her weight on her hand, Looking off in that, when people have time to turn back in, they'll just try and pull their leg out. That should be your reaction if the person already has the bite on the heel. So, as soon as you could try running away, and any good leg locker will stick to the leg and get the finish. The best thing to do here would be for Susie to sweat and look at it. And she has planted her foot in the foot. That's also something I don't particularly like. If a foot is flat on the floor, there's not very much weight going through my hip here, so I can lift it up and start turning. If your leg is straight, she is now kicking off of my armpit and driving her thigh into my hip. It makes it very hard for me to lift my hip. So that's the reaction. And that's what I tend to call for. So as soon as she gets up to her knees, 
when somebody elevates me, you can try repummeling, winning inside leg position. But if they win it, I don't pinch my knees, I'll just starfish. Yeah. Allowing this to happen, I'm making sure I get this reaction early. So now Susie's protecting her leg. She'll then look to raise her and look to peel this foot off of that hip. Best thing to do is to grab the poles. That's the easiest place to peel. Yeah, there. To stop it from coming, keep your hips up just a little bit. She wants her hips a little bit further forward. So this hand will be pinning that leg down. She wants to straighten her arm, not controlling me at the foot, and just controlling me at the shin. So straighten the arm. Straight down onto the floor like that. There. Keep your weight forward. There. So now I'm struggling with my control. Move back, see if you'll do the elevation. So as you'll elevate, my hands hit the ground, I start it. So grab one leg and kick through. No, no, through the middle, please. And now, yeah, worst thing I can do is stay here. She's under the heel. Now I don't want to turn in. I'll probably try and roll out of this. There are ways of potentially kicking out of this, but they are a bit risky and kind of a high level mode. You've got to really know your knee. So, stop. Before Susie's able to get underneath my heel, I push off of my hands and face her. Now she can get under my heel because my leg is straight, it's no longer bent, and my heel isn't away from her. But yeah, from here, straight. Straighten your leg, make sure you keep weight down on that hip. Top hand will peel the toes. Take a seat just where the foot is not looking at us. I don't want people getting into that habit. Don't try to pull in here. The moment your leg is taken, look at your opponent. Bring your head over the leg that she is attacking. Push the foot off. One thing they can do is screw up this defense, is throw this foot across the line of your knee. It's really hard to stop your knee from bending, which will expose your heel and allow your opponent to finish you. Make sure this hand immediately transitions to here. Keep this leg from going across the line of your hip. Right, I've talked for 15 minutes straight. Sorry. Is there any questions about what I've just discussed with the elevations, the grips you can take with them? I've just got a thought? question, Ross. Yeah. When um, she's got her hip on her foot on your hip, can you? Yeah. Uh, do a toe hold or attack her heel, even yeah. though it's elevated. Yeah, so it's no, almost no. like a reverse position. Yeah, no, absolutely. So there is, um, so there's one I don't know very well called an Aoki lock. So that's A O K I, if anyone wants to look at that. Aoki. Yeah, like the DJ. But um, um, there's one called. Um, corkscrew. So I could push Susie's leg across my hip here. Remember this, right? This outside hand comes under here. Yeah. Half arm will come in oh. the toes and go palm to palm there. That looks like something similar Michael Page did in yep. Bellator. Thank you. Yep. My elbow here. So here, my, um, my left elbow will rise, pull in her heel outside the line of her knee. Yeah. So this left elbow pulls as I force the toes down on my forearm. That's a corkscrew then. So if somebody's like suspiciously like pushing this posture, be a bit, be a bit wary of that. Like. But they might be looking to reverse it with a corkscrew. And you can do this um, in a seated position. You don't have to have your hips up here. Yeah? You could push this foot across the line of your hip. The forearm will come in over the toes. And it's important, this other one, crease of the elbow catches the heel. 
here. There you go. Pump, pump, one, two, two. Actually, that application there. Um, not one of my favorite tend to copy this. Um, one thing I want everyone to be very careful with. In this standing position, if Susie's able to keep this leg hooked, um, it's a bit dangerous because she reaps you. Now, I'm unable to fall backward because of this leg. So, if we ever, in this standing position, miss this leg and are forced to turn, you have to clear this lower leg. There she has. If that happens now, I should be able to get my knee down on the other side of her leg so my leg is safe. Even if she had the bite on my heel here, she wouldn't be attacking my knee. What I don't want to be caught in with the reef is my knee on the floor between her legs. Now she goes to apply the heel hook. She'll get so she manages. She gets double under. She elevates me. She threw. And she did. Single leg X, standard leg line. She's looking for the bite on my heel. I shut that square up a little bit. Yeah. This gives me time to clear the real, the, the real issue, which is the control she has on my hips. That is done with this knee and this heel. This knee, you can't really do anything well. You could if you were standing. If you're on your knees, this is the foot you've got to clear. Foot off the hip, and you'll be holding that there. You can stand up in this position, yeah. and potentially drive this leg through and drop down into a mount. That can be kind of difficult to follow. So, we be pushing this foot up. If you're in a standing position, what I find makes it a lot easier to clear this foot is driving that hip forward. So you see I start standing side on, I do a big old hip drive. That way. So this makes the contour that she's trying to take advantage of, my hip, a lot smaller. Makes the grip a lot, a lot smaller. So hip forward, and that will make it a lot easier to clear that foot. And remember, if she does successfully throw in a reef, we don't want to be caught in a position where she's controlling now both legs, with this back leg as well. So this hand will now switch to making sure you'll clear this. And from here, you should be able to successfully get your knee out from between her legs and down onto the ground. Here, you should be able to turn in side control. Right, thoughts guys. So another one for me, mate. When, again, back to when she's got your, her foot on your hip, can you do some sort of standing heel hook on her? Um, well, the corkscrew, yes. Um, Not a foot lock, but you see here now, can you attack that foot now? Uh, well, I'm going for the heel. Properly applied toe holds could come on the knee, which is, I guess, technically a heel hook. If she's able to back leg, it's not very good. Um, I'm struggling to stay up. No, it's not good for me, but you can sweep. I've pretty lost your feet, Ella. Well, if you don't know how. Um, if we're on the floor here, you do want to be, and I'm going to sound like inside heel. If it's right. under my hip, it looks like up here. So she always wants this leg hooking under my back. You're able to pull this out. You can hit. 
out here, or pass it to the other and hit inside heel hooks. Yeah, so if she loses control over this leg and ankle, you need to have this foot constantly controlling the opposite hamstring here, with the knee connected to the heel. Again, another option, if you're able to work this foot clear, is to move to a toe hold. And remember what I said about um, properly applied toe holds uh, should really come on the knee. Her leg is fully bent. I force the toes down to her butt. And to get the pressure on the knee, instead of just the foot, you peel the left elbow up to the ceiling on a bent leg. That will start that torque in the knee instead of the foot. Yeah. Okay, so what we do is to pull this heel up and outside the line of her hip, and you get the application. Yeah. Very, um, and very disciplined in your foot position when you're entering for single leg exercise. But those are the two counters I know, but most commonly I'll be looking to hit passes off of, off of this instead. Yeah. I feel like if you're standing up, mm -hmm. I have loads of room to move my hips. Mm -hmm. So part of the way that it works when we're on the ground is that I can't move from yeah. standing up. I always have the option. Yeah, spin uh, on the ground like this. Um, and there's more control when she is, when she's standing. It's quite a fluid position. You're not going to hit good pins. Pass it. You're going to feel super in control. And there's a lot of movement on the bar. On your hips when you're on the ground, it is a base. So for Susie to get decent hip movement in order to chase my heel, she'd have to put her forehead on the floor. And now using that as a base, she will lift her hips up off the ground, which gives her room to dig for that heel and then hit applications there. So a decent drill for this and get used to using your head as a base. You shimmy this way a little bit. You can do it without somebody, but so if Susie gets the bite on my heel and I turn, she has to follow. So she follows to this side. Now to get that hip movement, she puts her head on the floor, raises her butt using that as a face. That's it, and rolls over, and she'll finish it. Good. So yeah, getting on leg locks, getting used to using this as a base to get that hip elevation, very useful. I guess a silly drill for it would be something like this. Turn onto your side, head onto the floor, raising your hips, using that head as a bit. Well, we've done that before though, haven't we? Yeah. We used to do it that. Yeah, you know, I've uh, definitely talked about that before. Yeah. Thank Thanks, mate. That was great. Right. So, yeah, again, uh, I've talked for another 50 minutes. Uh, any thoughts, guys? I think I might move on to um, some count the back kicks off a bit. I think they work there. But yeah, any questions at the moment? Um, you know, when you're lifting, is this so easy? I, um, and then you go into single leg X. Um, yeah. The other option is going to the saddle, right? Um, would you just go for the single leg X as your main, your primary attack entry? No. Definitely shoot for the saddle as well. I'll show you how you drill that. It's a complex round. Well, it's a hard one, but once you get it, so. So, again, elevation largely the same. Up in the air. Yeah. Now, um, if she starfish, I wouldn't go for it. The saddle would normally be off of when Susie is keeping her heels close to her butt, like this. Now, from here to go saddle. Left hand. Switches to her other armpit. This hand, free now, frames on that leg. We extract that leg that was keeping that leg up and place a reverse X in on the back leg. Here, angle and kick that leg through and we're on the side. Right. 
very impressed you execute that. It's not about you, we're nothing. Uh, I guess we'll get the angles different here. So if we face this way, push that away, it's got white on it. So yeah, great question. Elevate a head above yours. Left hand switches to here, right hand switches to the leg. Strap your right leg. And we now have a front leg, that short leg. Make sure you get to the second leg. <laughs> Up into this is picture your legs very tight, just making it hard for me to extract that leg. If you ever find yourself in that position, just kick through the center, get the same. Background. I stopped in genius. <laughs> That's Susie's fuck up, not me. Did you see that entry okay? Nope. I will I'll talk soon for it. So yeah. There. Excellent. Let's get through. All right. Yeah, that would be the saddle entry off of that elevation. Um, yeah, definitely a good one to get into. But you can also connect that entry to in like so if you stand up, um, if you go down your knees, my mouth. That early. You can also elevate, kick through center, foot on the hip. Comes in, heels my toes off, and she starts facing me. Where does this foot go? It's impossible now to reach. She's got a good control. I can right, you show me this way. This leg can't get onto the hip, we can't go past it. Comes under and hooks her. You get that angle there. I still have control over her back. In this foot will circle. There's the reverse X on the back leg. Yeah. So I could use this to bring Susie's leg to me. So I bring my head, so I could kick away a little. And then bring my knees to my chest. Elevate in that back leg here. And now again, kick in that leg through. Off the reverse X, back into the saddle. You see how the reverse X works, so one more time. So he pushes this foot off, reverse X. You can go regular X if you prefer to sweep. But regular X is a better sweeping position. So that would be my right leg, the leg that is on the hip, go in to hook to the back leg okay, above my left. Reverse X would be that right leg being underneath the leg. So now this is excellent for knee bar entries and saddles. The only way I can get this back leg is to bring the leg above my eye leg. So we start initially by kicking her base out. 
Susie doesn't like it. She's a little bit concerned of me sweeping, so she'll drive her way back. If she stays back, don't get me wrong, right? You always go back to single leg X and sweep off the this. Back. Now, as she drives back, I elevate this X above my I might be ready to chase. Yeah. Up. I've got a flow in back leg with this reverse X in. Hand position off of this. Left hand. Armpit. This helps me generate that hip angle. So you see, I flick my hips out to the side. Kind of hard to do square. Hips out to the side. The hand that is wrapping the primary leg, so this one currently, reaches up and catches this leg. Sometimes I'll see it coming and I'll keep this leg high up in the air. So I can reach, I can pull my X down and pull the leg down into this. Kick, right leg past the knee. Hips come up, lock that triangle up, and I'll force her hips down to the ground and into the saddle. Yeah. Uh, the effect of the F for the cover. If we are forced to go single leg X, uh, we can move to the saddle off of that. That reverse X can be used in a lot of different orientations of the same position. You give me this type of sit down. So for instance, after we'll have forced our opponent's hips to the floor, not ideal for them. A lot harder for me to leg lock Susie if she keeps her hips up off the ground. So no, 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 stay facing this way. She's good at defending her legs. She keeps her, she pushes this foot off. She hops her butt over the foot. Super common leg lock you think. Leaning back. So she wouldn't be leaning back. Remember what I said about putting my head on the floor as well. From here, top hand will come through. Double control on the leg I already have. The knee and here. Head on the ground, but up in the air. There's my reverse X now. From here, I'll kick back, collect the knee, and there's my saddle entry off of her foot lock defense. Single leg X. It's exactly the same thing, just we're on the ground. <laughs> Any thoughts, guys? Anyone use this? No. Hey, sorry, can I get rough? Hey, sir. Good buddy. What were you asking? Uh, so anyone use that? What are your thoughts? So I've only just logged in, so I only just caught the end of it, but uh, I'm only really... So it's off my pay grade. Go through all that again then, please. Go through it all again, mate, for my benefit. Just for Seb. He just needs attention. Tell him you love him and he'll go away. I do that every day. <laughs> That's savage, Baba. <laughs> That's why he's in a different room. <laughs> different house, different, different borough right now. <laughs> right. So, take away from this back. Elevations and threatening charging back at them if you're struggling to get in on the legs. Kicking through a single leg X. Cool. Defenses when that happens. Now, what I, I, uh, I, I dislike a little bit as well is, um, if we come to half drive, square up a bit. Um, when you're a point, we'll get under the leg here. 
and it's going to be impossible for you to kind of resist that pull and then pulling this leg up on into a leg locking position. But I still see people trying to stay low and pinch their knees as tight as they can to, you know, and just try to generate resistance that way. So I think the more efficient way of defending your leg here is to get the jump on the next position. So as they pull it up, allow it to be straightened and make sure she gets her body shape right for the next part, which is a heavy front leg and immediately looking to peel this foot off here. You can look to stand here. So keep it over this leg, controlling this hip. She can push this shin down and look to take a back step with this back leg. So like all the way out. So push the down step back over there. And now she can come to a knee on belly or a side of the door. Good. So if you know where your opponent is trying to put you, accept it. Don't try to hold on to that position that's already lost and get a jump on the technique after that. You go down onto your knee. Ross, can I ask a really annoying question? Maybe it's something you've already covered and I apologise for turning up late. <laughs> That's all right. Um, when you said a cheap yeah, head, how, how, do you, how do you do that? Keep the head up. No, the heavy, so you said about having a heavy leg. So when, when she's transitioning, oh. to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. So see if he's got this. Oh, by the way, if you're in this position, the best way to get this leg up onto your shoulder is for Susie to flare her, uh, yeah, that elbow up. So if you can get this heel away from my butt, it's impossible for me to resist. So here she will use her right elbow to get to her ear, talking my knee, and that will allow her to get it up onto the shoulder. So don't just try pulling it onto you to get that leg. Now maintain it square up, please. Maintaining a heavy leg, which would be a good place for us to finish. If your foot is flat on the floor in this single leg exposition, so foot, and foot. So legs bent, it's not heavy. Foot flat on the floor, not heavy. Way of making it heavy, straighten the leg fully so your foot hooks underneath her armpit. So that straight leg will mean it's heavy. So now kick it with her arm. Oh. Yeah. In this position, if you shift your weight forward through your hip on a bent leg, will that make the leg heavy? Um, it's not really ideal. So if I'm bent leg here and I try to move it forward, she's still got a lot of hip movement to kick me off. The uh, benefit of this leg means that she can't kick me away, really. So All right, yeah, away. okay. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question, Ross, quickly? Um, if you if you stretch the leg and you kind of kind of try to get under her armpit, are you at risk of being heel hooked more? Or oh, not really. So it's like so. As soon as you can't turn her hips to get under my heel, really, so it's your hard leg. So, oh my! So try to turn into your right. As soon as attempt to turn to her right. Okay. Because of the weight. This year. Is that, is that like pinning a hip flat to the mat then? Okay. I don't get wrong, if you push this off, you can always circle this leg back into a half guard here and look to pressurize off of it. Here, instead of being bent leg, weight on your hands, straight leg. Close to the ceiling, facing your opponent. Uh, no, I can peel this foot off. It's very difficult for her to turn her hips. Mm -hmm. And now I can start circling this leg back if I wanted to get my Now, I need to get frame in a really straight bin with a cross face or double unders and pass heavy hips. Remember guys, one of the hardest things it is to, in half guard pass is to get this knee onto her hip to control it. 
Moving back from single leg X, we've successfully defended it, and now circling this leg backwards, this knee is connected heavy to this hip. You can drop into some heavy passes easily. That, did that answer the question, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's wonderful, man. Thank you. Like, it's weird you do that. Yeah. And like a good of it. Oh, she's going to hit me. Already did. <laughs> now. Now, I've got under her arm. I'm moving my knee up above her head. Try and nice lift her arm. Leg bent. Leg light. Sorry. <laughs> oh, straighten the leg. I know. Straight, straighten the leg. And then look at your toes. Crushing pressure. So here. Single leg X, guys. Right? This leg's super light, like bent, really light. Right. What I'm doing, yeah. got a pressure pad underneath us that can tell us just how heavy it is. Susie, how heavy is it? Medium heavy. Medium heavy. Heavy. See? <laughs> I didn't quite get that. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah, please. <laughs> That would be helpful, yeah. That'd be really good. Right, guys. That's three quarters of an hour of me talking. You were still um, no. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please come back. <laughs> uh, questions? If anyone has any. No, I actually had questions for once, and I asked them already. We'll see you Thursday. Wicked. Thanks, buddy. Lovely to see you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, friends. So that. Uh, great seeing you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you then. Welcome, mate. See you soon, bud. So that. Yeah, the bye. Bye. <laughs>